Hello Grade 12s, today we'll be joining Tato and his lecturer as he explains how he has determined if the craft store is making a profit or a loss. Good morning ma'am. Hey Tato. Can I sit down? Ah, please. Have you made any progress with your graphs? Yes, I've completed the graphs for the income and expenditure for most of the item Madlamini makes. I just need to check that the conclusions that I'm making are correct. These graphs look quite impressive. What would you like to discuss? I've noticed a similar pattern with most of the graphs. Firstly, they are all straight line graphs. Secondly, at the starting point where the number of items sold is very few, the income line is below the expenditure line. Then there's a point where the income line crosses the expenditure line. At this point, the income line is above the expenditure line. Ah, so you've noticed the pattern. Mm. Good. Let's look at each of these sections using the graph you've drawn for the tablecloths. In this highlighted area, the red expenditure line is above the blue income line. So, even though Madi has sold three tablecloths, her expenditure is more than her income. This area on the graph represents a loss. What happens after she sells four or more tablecloths? For four or more tablecloths, the blue income line is above the red expenditure line. This means she is bringing in more money than it costs her to make the tablecloths. She must be making a profit when she sells more than four tablecloths. That's right, Tato. The blue highlighted area on the graph represents the profit region, while the pale red area represents a loss. The income and expenditure lines cross over at a point between three and four tablecloths. Absolutely right, Tato. The point of intersection is where the income my dear receives is exactly equal to all her expenditure in making the tablecloths. Now, can you remember what we call that point? Yes, you told me that when the income is equal to the expenditure, this is called the break-even point. Correct! But what puzzles me is that the break-even point is different for each of the items my D sells. She only needs to sell four tablecloths to pass the break-even point. Yet, she needs to sell 14 beaded ribbons before she reaches that break-even point. But why does my D have to sell more ribbons than tablecloths to get above the break-even point? Good question. But the best way to answer is to look at the table showing the markups my D adds onto her ribbons and onto her tablecloths. Remember, you've worked out what 66% of the cost of making each item was and added this on to get the new selling price. Even though you increase the prices of all the items by the same percentage, the actual amount of money is different. A ribbon only costs 7 rand 43 to make, and so the 66% markup is only 4 rand 90 cents. A tablecloth costs much more to make, and so the same percentage markup results in a bigger amount, 18 rand 93 cents. After adding in the markup, you rounded off your prices to the next 50 cents so that Madi wouldn't have to worry about dealing with lots of small change. Remember, the markup is there to pay for all Madi's fixed expenses. You've allocated an equal part of the fixed expenditure of 415 rands to each of the six items. This means that you have to make up 69 rands and 17 cents from the difference in cost and the final selling price before the break-even point is reached. Can you use the data in this table to confirm the break-even targets you found on your graphs? I'll use my calculator here again, starting with the ribbons. Part of the fixed expenditure of 69 rand and 17 cents is paid each time Ma D sells a ribbon. That's 5 rand and 7 cents per sale. To calculate the number of ribbons my D has to sell, I'll divide 69 rand and 17 cents by um, 5 rand and 7 cents. I get 13,642. This means that my Lamini will only reach her break-even point if she sells 14 ribbons. Hey, that confirms what we have in the graph here. My D has to sell between 13 and 14 ribbons before she reaches her break-even point. Well, for the tablecloths, the difference in cost and selling price is 19 rand and 32 cents. In order to calculate the number of tablecloths Madlamini needs to sell, I will take 69 rand and 17 cents 
and divide it by 19 rand and 32 cents. I get an answer of 3,58. This confirms that the break-even point lies between three and four tablecloths on the graph. That means Madlamini must sell more than four tablecloths in order to make a profit. Yes. Now you understand that she has to sell a different quantity of each of her items to pass the break-even point because their selling prices are different. The more expensive items cover the fixed expenditure quicker than the cheaper items. You've also used your calculator to confirm the break-even point. <laughs> I'm impressed with your work, Tato. <laughs> Thanks, Mrs. Ndlazi. It makes sense that Madlamini sells a smaller quantity of her more expensive items and a larger quantity of her more cheaper items. This way, she will reach an overall break-even point. I've made the assumption that her items sell equally well. This may not be true. I see the advantage of setting targets. But how can Madi know when she has reached her break-even point for the week? She achieves the break-even point when she reaches her sales target for each item. Well, that might work in theory, but I don't think she'll reach a target every week. Certain goods are more popular than others and therefore will sell faster. I would like to design a way to calculate the break-even point for different combinations of goods. Think about how you found the break-even point for the tablecloths using your calculator. What values did you use? I divided the fixed expenditure of an item, 69 rand and 17 cents, by the difference between the cost price and the selling price, 19 rand and 32 cents. You can use the same values to work out if Madi is making an overall profit or loss. Now, here's a challenge for you. This table shows the sales Madi made last week. Based on these sales figures and your new prices, can you work out if she's making an overall profit or loss? Remember that the total fixed expenditure which needs to be covered is 415 rand. Oh, ma'am, I'm always ready for a challenge. I think I'll do this by working out the difference between the cost price and the selling price of each item. I'm going to add two more columns on this table. In the first column, I've written down the difference between the selling price and the cost price. Next, I'm going to multiply the number of items sold by the markup which was 66%. Finally, I'll add all the values in this column, giving me a total of 769 rand and 60 cents, which is more than her fixed expenditure of 415 rand. She would actually be making a profit of 354 rand and 60 cents. Well, that's really cool. <laughs> I think I'll help Madi do this calculation every week. That way, she'll know exactly when she's making a loss or a profit. There is another very quick way to estimate this using a percentage calculation. Any ideas? Well, we've added a standard markup of 66% to all goods Madi sells. That may be quite useful in calculating the cost of all goods sold. Once I know the total cost, I'll be able to work out the difference between total cost and total income and find out if it covers expenditure. Ha! You're on the right track. Hmm. I know the total income will be equal to the selling price. And the selling price is the total cost of making each item plus the markup, which is roughly 66%. Carry on. So at the end of the day, Madi simply counts up all the money she has in her cash box subtracts 100 rand that she keeps to give her customers change, and she's left with a total income for the day. Next, I'll calculate the total cost using the percent markup. I'll need to write a formula to help me here. If the total income equals the total cost plus markup, and the markup is approximately 66% of the total cost, I'll represent the total cost of goods with a C and the total income with an I. This gives the formula I equals C plus 66% times C. So far, so good. It's a little complicated, though. Could you simplify the equation? Well, 66% is the same as the fraction 66 divided by 100, which equals 0, 0,66. So the equation can be written as I equals C 
plus 0, comma 6, 6, C. Both the terms on the right-hand side have a C in them, so we can add them together. 1C plus 0, comma 6, 6, C equals 1, comma 6, 6, C. That means C, the cost of goods, equals I, the income from sales divided by 1,66. To calculate the total costs of the items sold in one day, all I need to do is divide the total income of that day by 1,66. And if I want to find out whether my lamini is making a profit or a loss, all I need to do is subtract the total cost from the total income of that day. For example, if my D's income for the day is 452 rand and 50 cents, then the cost of making the goods she sells is 272 rand and 59 cents. It may look like my D has made a profit, but I can't ignore the fixed expenditure. Only once the fixed expenditure has been paid will my D be making a profit. Well done, I couldn't have explained it better. Now that you have a way of telling if my D is making a profit or a loss or just breaking even. Now you can work out a plan of how she can improve on her profits and run a more successful stall. Next time I see you, I expect you to have lots of good ideas, my boy. <laughs> well, I'm working quite hard to get this part of the project correct. <laughs> and you know what? I think I'll be ready quite soon. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Thank you for all your help, ma'am. Have a good day. Thank you for joining us, Grade 12s. Remember, the tasks for this section can be found in the Finance of Business task video. You'll also be able to learn more on our website www.mindset.co.za forward slash learn. Goodbye.